Hello, I'm Scott Porter, a marine biologist in the northern Gulf of Mexico. As an invasive coral biologist, one of my favorite places to dive used to be the main pass block of rigs, which lie just east of the Mississippi River. This area used to be known for its crystal blue waters, which were not typically affected by the Mississippi River's output. These underwater oases grow under offshore oil and gas installations and are part of the world's largest chain of artificial coral reefs that exist here in the northern gulf. Exploring these uncharted reefs is like an undersea odyssey, reminding me of Alice in Wonderland. Notice that I said it used to be one of my favorite diving spots. And it was one of my favorite spots before the Macondo Well blowout. With close to 300 million gallons of oil and over 2 million gallons of dispersant placed in the Gulf waters, it literally makes me sick to dive there. Much of this oil headed west and eventually engulfing the Mississippi Canyon block of rigs which lie just 50 miles to the west of the Macondo Well. These platforms are installed in over a thousand feet of water and we visited them in 2010. This is what we saw August 23rd, 2010. Please note the number of fish that still exist on the platform and how thriving a community that still is living underneath the plume which at this point is down to 50 feet. I used to be amazed about the number of fish that we would see under this platform. However, 1,000 days later, it does not look the same. And that's where we are. December 17th, 2013. The water here looks a lot better. There's no visible plume. However, the reef itself looks decimated. Here we are at 60 feet looking for suitable colonies to sample and yet all I am seeing is dead reef. Look on the columns you can still see a little bit of yellow from the tapestry that's still alive and then we do find something unique a lionfish the first time I've ever recorded a lionfish on a structure in the northern Gulf of Mexico looks like the latest invasive species you have to be extra careful with this fish. He has venomous spines in his fins. Now let's go back to August 2010. And this is what we were seeing. A vibrant community of reef fish and coral colonies surviving at 60 feet. Now let's take a look at what we're seeing today. Looks like the decimation of the coral reef at 60 feet on this structure and also the annihilation of most of the fish that were living around this structure. The reef community seems to be hurting bad. This reef may be suffering from toxic marine snow which has settled out of the water column and onto the structures smothering or poisoning the coral and the reef organisms living around it. As I watch the video now, I can't help but wonder, where are all the fish? Remember, this is what we were seeing in 2010. A vibrant reef community. There's our Tabastria micranthus, the organisms that we're looking for. The green sun polyps there that you see. Also, the Tabastria coccinea, or the orange and the yellow ones that are living beside it. They are surviving. But it's a whole different story a thousand days later. At this point they are not surviving. And I am having trouble finding viable candidates to sample. And oh yeah, where are all the fish? <laughs> 